Chapter twenty six of the Hoosier Schoolmaster by Edward Eggleston. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Bridget Gage. Chapter twenty six. A letter and its consequences. Squar Hawkins, this is to let you know that you better be careful who you and your family tax sides with fur people won't stan it to hev the men what's sportin the ones what's robbin us sported by your folks keepin company with em you been a ossifer of the law your hay will burn as quick as to in your barn too so tack keer no more ad present this letter accomplished its purpose the squire's spectacles slipped off several times while he read it his wig had to be adjusted if he had been threatened personally he would not have minded it so much but the haystacks were dearer to him than the apple of his glass eye the barn was more precious than his wig and those who hoped to touch bud in a tender place through this letter knew the squire's weakness far better than they knew the spelling-book to see his new red barn with its large mormon hay-press inside and the mounted indian on the vane consumed was too much for the hawkins heart to stand evidently the danger was on the side of his niece but how should he influence martha to give up bud martha did not value the haystacks half so highly as she did her lover martha did not think the new red barn with the great mormon press inside and the galloping indian on the vane worth half so much as a moral principle or a kind-hearted action martha bless her would have sacrificed anything rather than forsake the poor but squire hawkins lips shut tight over his false teeth in a way that suggested astringent purse-strings and squire hawkins could not sleep at night if the new red barn with a galloping indian on the vane were in danger martha must be reached somehow so with many adjustings of that most adjustable wig with many turnings of that reversible glass eye the squire managed to frighten martha by the intimation that he had been threatened and to make her understand what it cost her much to understand that she must turn the cold shoulder to chivalrous awkward bud whom she loved most tenderly partly perhaps because he did not remind her of anybody she had ever known at the east tuesday evening was the fatal time spelling school was the fatal occasion bud was the victim pete jones had his revenge for bud had been all the evening trying to muster courage enough to offer himself as martha's escort he was not encouraged by the fact that he had spelled even worse than usual while martha had distinguished herself by holding her ground against james phillips for half an hour but he screwed his courage to the sticking place not by quoting to himself the adage faint heart never won fair lady which indeed he had never heard but by reminding himself that ef you don't risk nothin you'll never get nothin so when the spelling school had adjourned he sidled up to her and looking dreadfully solemn and a little foolish he said can i see you safe home and she with a feeling that her uncle's life was in danger and that his salvation depended upon her resolution she with a feeling that she was pronouncing sentence of death on her own great hope answered huskily no i thank you if she had only known that it was the red barn with the indian on top that was in danger she would probably have let the galloping brave take care of himself it seemed to bud as he walked home mortified disgraced disappointed hopeless that all the world had gone down in a whirlpool of despair might a note it he said to himself of course a smart gal like martha ain't a goin to take a big blunderin fool they can't spell in two syllables what's the use of tryin a flat cricker is a flat cricker you can't make nothin else of him no more nor you can make a chiny hog into a berkshire End of chapter twenty six